Hey folks, today uh, we are going to be building a Faraday can. <clears throat> and so I've enlisted the help of Sam of Ravenshire to uh, help with this project. Uh, it's important to get your kids involved with these types of projects so they understand what the hell it is that you're doing and why you're doing it, right? So it's important to pass this knowledge on to your children. Uh, for those of you that are prepping, and uh, you're, you're kind of leading the charge on the prepping, but you're not involving your family and specifically your children, you are epically failing. And when I say that, I don't say that lightly. Uh, you're not going to be around always. Uh, many things can happen to you. And if that knowledge that you've acquired over the years dies with you, it's probably going to impact your family pretty severe. So I encourage and challenge all of you listening to this video and watching this video today to involve your kids into these types of projects. They're fun. They're science behind it. It's a great learning opportunity. And at the end of the day, you are going to walk away with the ability to protect some of your electronics, uh, depending on the size of the can that you make or how many electronics you have. So with that all being said, we're going to get started. This can in front of you uh, that you're seeing on the on the camera here, this is a 10-gallon galvanized um, can. I got this at Tractor Supply, and it's sold for the purpose of wild bird seed storage. But what's super important, uh, Sam, if you could point to the, the, the handle. There you go is the handle. The handle is key to this because it locks the lid tight to the, the top of the, the can and it creates a, an excellent uh, connection uh, for the whole can. So we're gonna, we're gonna show you how that works here in just a second. So a couple of reasons why you would want something like this. Uh, there's two types of EMPs that we could experience here uh, either in the near future or at some point uh, in the life of the world. So uh, one is naturally uh, occurring and the other is man-made. Naturally occurring uh, EMPs are called coronal mass ejections. That's when an X9 or higher solar flare hits the earth. Uh, it will fry electronics. Uh, there's some real early examples of this. Uh, from the 1800s, they called it the Carrington event, uh, where we only had basic electronic or electric inter, uh, infrastructure, and it fried things like telegraph wires and real basic electricity circuits. Today, our dependence on electronics is absolutely absurd, and with a, a Carrington level event. It would be a very different world for us if that were to happen to us. X10 and higher types of flares are devastating to electronic infrastructure. So you need to keep that stuff in mind. And that's even little things, your phone, your car. Now, not all cars are going to go down, but a lot will. And the more dependent we become on electric vehicles and things like that, the more susceptible we are to these types of attacks. So don't throw away grandpa's old diesel pickup truck. You want to keep that around. You want to keep some diesel on hand because at the end of the day, as long as the electronics are okay or it's one of the older vehicles that has no electronics and everything is mechanical, you're going to have transportation when others will not. That all being said, that's just a real quick primer. The other is a, a high altitude nuclear um, blast. Uh, that will create uh, a huge EMP wave, uh, and there's there's several different types. There's conventional uh, EMP weapons, um, conventional in the sense that they're not the super EMP. Uh, both are nuclear, so non-conventional warfare, right? Uh, but as far as smaller yield nuclear versus the higher yield, which produces a lot larger um, gamma burst which is the wavelength that is going to hit all of our wires and uh, smoke everything that's in its path. Um, these super EMP weapons currently uh, China has them 
supposedly North Korea has them and, and Russia has them. Uh, three of our, our, our best friends currently in the world. And, uh, you know, we've already seen some in, incursions over the recent weeks with probing type of tax and, and that sort of thing. So uh, I think it's time to put one of these cans together. So the first thing that we're going to do, uh, why don't you take the lid off? And this is going to be a two-part video, folks. So um, we'll we'll talk about the contents in another. Don't throw that out. Uh, how how much was that can? That's why I left the receipt in there. It should have been like twenty-five bucks. Twenty twenty-four ninety-nine or something like that. <clears throat> yeah, twenty-four ninety-nine. All right. So for twenty-five bucks. You can get one of these cans at Tractor Supply or anywhere where you can buy a garbage can. You can look for these small 10-gallon cans. Uh, what I like about this one is it's straight-sided, straight so it doesn't have the taper like you would with the uh, larger trash cans. Um, so it's going to make lining this thing real important. Um, so we're going to line this with cardboard. We're going to put a cardboard circle on the bottom, and then we're going to line the inside of that. So... Uh, we we purchased the nesting bags, uh, which are just military grade EMP proof uh, bags that you can put electronics in, and I'll explain nesting here in just a minute. So uh, we're gonna get the the cardboard ready to go inside and uh, the finished product here. So conveniently, the uh, box that our Faraday bags came in is perfect size to do the lining of this can, top and bottom as well. So once it gets this finished, uh, we'll, we'll put this inside and we'll show you how that we do that. Okay, so we've measured uh, the board, the cardboard, and now we're going to go ahead and cut it to size. Now this doesn't have to be perfect, folks. What you're trying to do by using the lining is prevent anything from touching the sides of the metal can. Um, so then you could just lay the thing down and go along with it with a knife. Just put your straight line down onto your line. Okay, put your straight your straight edge. There you go. Nope. Lay it flat. There you go. Now slide it over and get it lined up perfectly. And then put your knee on your straight edge. Yep. Once you put your knee on your straight edge, then you can uh, just go ahead and cut the board. There you go. Okay. Got it back up, buddy. There you go. Good. Now start up by your hand there yep and just drag it right down toward your knee yep get it lined up now if you pull from the top back toward you mm -hmm. it should rip right along the line okay put your box cutter away there now you gotta start it up, up close. There you go. Yep. Yep. Just like that. You need to trim that with the cutter. By all means, do so. So now, now we're going to use that extra piece and we're going to cut out the bottom and we're going to draw a circle around the outside of the can and then we're going to cut on the inside of the circle. So it should be a pretty close 
fit when we get this all cut out. Okay, go ahead and knock that out. Let's uh, put that in the in the can. Hold on a second. I'm on my shaky camera work here. All right, go ahead. All right, it's pretty good. Okay, let's go ahead and roll up that uh, inside. Put that in. What you want to do is expand that all the way down. And no, oh, no, don't don't worry about that. Okay. So when you build this, folks, you want to leave it so that it'll expand inside the can as you pack it with stuff. So what what he's going to do is going to pull the inside flat forward, and he's going to put some tape on the inside. Nope. Pull, pull that piece. This th one? You're going to tape that part to the inside of the can. Yep. Okay. You're going to leave that other part exposed. So then that way there, the inside lining can expand as you put stuff in it. And it won't just slide around in there. You might want to get another piece of tape and put it on the bottom. Yeah. Okay. All right. All right. Good. All right. So now we're just going to put uh, some cardboard on the lid, and then uh, we'll, uh, we'll this project will be pretty much done. All right. So we got our lid cut out. Yeah. Use that side right there. Okay. And now what we're going to do is we're going to tape that in, but we're going to be very careful not to tape where the the lid makes contact with the can. So you want to make sure there's no tape up in that, that area, okay, Sam? Up in the house? Yeah. Okay. If you're going to stack this thing to the brim with, with your handheld comms or any other electronic devices that you're going to put in this thing, then you want to make sure that none of them are touching the top of that. And we're going to get into the nesting part of this in part two, um, and that is going to help you also kind of organize this as well. But this is the basic uh, Faraday can, and uh, yeah, if you've got if you've got electronics that uh, go ahead and give it a test fit. If you've got electronics that Lift the bale up. There you go. How's that feel? Good. Good? Okay. If you've got uh, sensitive electronics that you want to protect, uh, open that up. This is one way that you can do it. Now, <clears throat> you can also do this with uh, like a one of the fat cans, a 50, 50 cal fat can. Just line the inside of that ammo can with some uh, cardboard and you could put some electronics into that I mean that's that's a pretty simple one to do uh, you can use these metal trash cans this is a 10 gallon can you can get the bigger full-size trash cans and do this if you've got a lot of stuff to put in here for us this is gonna put all of our handy talkies are gonna go inside this and a few other things that we have uh, to protect and uh, this is just one of uh, several Faraday cans that we use so um yeah and again too you know it organizes your your comms i like the handle on this can because then i can grab it and throw it in a truck if we've got to go someplace um we it's mobile it doesn't take up a lot of space and you can uh have a little bit of peace of mind that 
if the sun pops off an X-class flare or if some deranged nation state decides to uh, hit us with some kind of nuclear EMP that you've got some some level of protection um, to, to, to be able to have communications and be able to listen to anything that survived that uh, so not everything's going to die folks if an EMP uh, should hit us but the ability to be able to, to listen to those communications gather information and intelligence as well as communicate with the people in your family or in your groups is critical uh, when you have something like this going on and not everybody's going to be prepared for it so be one of the ones that that, that has this capability and again uh, twenty five dollars for the can and uh, some scrap pieces of cardboard is all you need in order to put something like this together so with that uh, we'll see you on part two when we when we nest the electronics in there and we'll show you how that's done and uh, this is what we're using we're going to use um, the the Faraday brand uh, Faraday bags and uh, you can get those on Amazon I'll give you a real heads up they're not cheap but it's one of those pay once cry once types of deals and uh, if, if you're serious about having these electronics after uh, an electromagnetic pulse event, then the, the money won't be too hard to uh, justify. So with that, this is uh, William of Ravenshire and Sam of Ravenshire. And uh, we hope you found this interesting and we hope this helps you build your own. And we'll catch you in part, part two.